Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, I know it's been quite a while since I've actually done one of these videos, um, but I, I was asked a question today, and that was so very powerful, and of course I answered it uh, via uh, post, uh, replying to a post or a comment on Facebook, that it really challenged me also to record this video. Uh, last night, I dealt pretty heavily uh, in the church service about emotional maturity. And the fact of the matter is, is that in this generation, um, we very much so lack the necessary emotional maturity uh, to do oftentimes what God is calling us to do. In fact, the enemy wages such a heavy warfare in this generation um, in, in our emotions uh, that oftentimes uh, it, 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 it and inhibits us from performing the purpose of God for our lives. Many people, in fact, are uh, oftentimes uh, completely handicapped uh, and disabled in emotions. It is because we are not emotionally mature. It's very difficult for this generation, for whatever reason, to handle uh, emotional turmoil, uh, setbacks, uh, discouragement, it's, it's very difficult for this generation to deal with defeat. Um, I, I was listening um, earlier uh, to a John Maxwell post, and many of you all know that he's a leadership guru. And in that post, um, he made a statement that sometimes you win and sometimes you learn, uh, which I thought was such a powerful statement because there are times in our life uh, that we win and we win big, and there are times in our life that we lose. And it's how we lose uh, is really the determination of whether we actually are defeated. Uh, just because you lose doesn't mean you're defeated. The way, to, the way to lose and not be defeated is to learn from your loss. And if you can learn from every loss, then you are not defeated. And so uh, I, I made a post this morning uh, about the fact that I have determined uh, as it pertains to myself uh, within the realm of emotion uh, that uh, I am going to make that a hotel stay and not a habitation. In other words, I'm just going to have that as a momentary uh, issue of my life. I'm not going to build my house there. And that is the difference between losing and being defeated because all of us are going to go through times in our life where there are going to be great highs and then we're going to go through times where there are great lows. And, 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 and it's how you respond to all of that uh, will be the basis on whether you actually fulfill the purpose of God for your life or you are incredibly defeated and perpetually um, uh, 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 discouraged from moving forward in your life. And so I want to talk about this because the Bible does tell us that weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And so let's talk about that. I want to package that just for a second because the morning is not necessarily a certain time of day when we're dealing with spiritual matters or emotional matters. Uh, the, 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 the morning is not necessarily a certain specific time of the day, even though for us physically, we go to bed when it is dark and we wake up when our alarm clock goes off and that is morning. That is not necessarily uh, how it equates to us spiritually and emotionally. Really, the morning is just whenever you wake up. And if you look at it even from a natural perspective, there are many people, uh, their morning is at 5 o'clock in the morning. Their morning is at 8 o'clock in the morning. Some people, their waking up to the next day is maybe 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon based upon the kind of shift that they work on their job. And so morning is not necessarily a certain time of day. It is just when you wake up. And there may be a lot of us that are going through night seasons right now. Uh, we're going through seasons of discouragement. And, and those nights can be long. They can be very long. They can, they can last for days and weeks, but they cannot last forever. Uh, because in spite of anything that we might lose along the way, we have to at some point allow the Lord to wake us up out of the slumber of depression anxiety, fear, frustration, despair. We have got to allow the Lord to wake us up. And, and the, 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 the quickest way to come out of those kind of situations is through thankfulness and gratitude. 
oftentimes the night is dark because that's what we're focused on. We're focused on the night. We're focused on the length of the night. We're focused on uh, the, the, the harshness of the night. We're focused uh, on the despair that is in the night. And so we never find ourselves coming to the morning. We never find ourselves waking up out of that. And it is oftentimes because we lose things that are valuable to us. We lose things uh, that, that, that are powerful in our lives. And so when we begin to look at the rest of our life, it is hard for us to even, be, to even begin to consider uh, that God could be doing something any better in our life or that something uh, could come into our life that could bring us peace and happiness and joy outside of that because all of our eggs may be in that basket. But the fact of the matter is, child of God, sometimes you have to force yourself to wake up. There are times you have to shake yourself until you wake up. And as children of God, the way we do that is through number one, thanksgiving. Yes, we have lost, and sometimes those losses can be powerful, and those losses can be incredibly heavy. But you have to look at what you have left and begin to thank God for what remains. Because I promise you, God is never going to take from you without leaving you something. God is never going to take from you without giving you something. He is the God that gives, and he is the God that takes away. God's economy is never to leave you destitute, is to never leave you in a place of nothing. God is always going to give you something uh, in place of what has been lost. And so you have to look around you and say, Lord, what do I have left? And then begin to thank God for what you have left. The next way to shake yourself out of the darkness, to shake yourself out of slumber, to wake up, the next way is to praise God is to begin to magnify the Lord for who he is, that in spite of what you have lost, in spite of the struggle that you're in, in spite of the circumstances that you find yourself in, in spite of the hardship that you're going through, as you begin to praise God for number one, who he is, and number two, for the things that he has done in your life. And so if God has been good to you on any measure, give him praise for that. If God has blessed you uh, in any way, give him praise for that. If you have woke up this morning and you're clothed and in your right mind, you already have something to give God praise for. And so that joy that's coming in the morning doesn't necessarily, uh, isn't necessarily dictated by a certain time of the clock. It comes when we wake up. And sometimes we wake up out of that sleep and out of that slumber uh, because of shock or because of something that takes place. Other times we have to shake ourselves out of that slumber and begin to focus on everything that God has continued to bless us with around us, to begin to focus on all of those things that have remained in spite of what God has allowed to be taken away. And then begin to give God praise and thanksgiving for those things. If we do those things, child of God, we will wake up. And when we wake up, that joy will come in the morning. The Lord promised us that if you weep in the night, I will allow joy to meet you in the morning. And so I just wanted to take a few minutes here today and encourage someone who may be watching this, who may be going through very difficult times in their life right now, who may be grieving over a situation of loss. And, uh, you know, nobody knows what you've lost like you know what you've lost. But God's will is to never keep you in a place of perpetual grief, in a place of perpetual mourning, where the only relief that you ever will find is when you die. That's not within God's will. For he has said in his word that I will turn mourning into dancing. I will give you the oil of joy in the place of mourning. Those who sow in tears, you'll reap in joy. I want to encourage you, shake yourself today. Maybe some of you have faced some very hardships at the beginning of the day. Listen, don't ever let moments ruin, moments of the day ruin the rest of the day. Don't ever allow the enemy to get you to believe because it's been a rough morning, then it's going to be an impossible afternoon. Sometimes 
you got a rough morning, but shake yourself out of that child of God, whether it be on your lunch break, whether it be uh, in traveling from one place to the next one day destination, or maybe sometimes you just got to get in the bathroom and in a stall all by yourself and begin to thank the Lord for the good things that he has done in your life. You got to shake yourself out of that. And then that will give you the strength to go on and to face the rest of the day because failure in the morning does not necessarily negate success in the evening. I'm going to say that again. Failure in the morning does not necessarily negate success in the evening. And so if you've had a rough morning, accept it for what it is. Everybody has difficult days. Everybody has tough mornings. But then begin to change the trajectory of your emotions and say it's been a difficult morning, but that doesn't mean that that is the rest of my day, nor does it mean it negates uh, the, 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 the production for the rest of my day. I may, I may have horribly fumbled the ball at work today, this morning, but I'm going to be more productive this afternoon. I may have horribly fumbled the ball with my wife this morning, but I'm going to uh, be more productive uh, for her uh, this afternoon. I may have horribly fumbled the ball with my kids this morning, but I'm going to be more productive for them this afternoon. Don't ever allow failure in the morning to determine success and to determine the outcome of the evening. Always understand that the day is made up of morning, afternoon, evening. You've got different seasons, different quarters of the day. Just because a team does bad in the first quarter does not mean that they will lose in the fourth quarter. It is how you adjust in those seasons and in those, those periods of the day that will allow you to either see success at the end of the day, progress at the end of the day, purpose at the end of the day, or if you just yield to the fact because you've had a lousy first quarter, the fourth quarter is a wrap. The devil is alive. God <laughs> is a God of power. He's a God of strength and he is a God of help. If you're going through a morning season right now, shake yourself out of it by looking around you and being thankful for what the Lord has allowed to be left in your life. If, if you're going through a grieving season because you've lost someone, who is special to you, maybe a spouse, uh, maybe a child. Uh, I, I've seen so many of God's people, not that they ever lose times of grief, but they have not allowed themselves to live a lifestyle of grief because they also find joy in moments when they remember what God allowed them to experience with that person, how God allowed them to love that person, uh, the moments of happiness and joy and the moments of triumph and struggle when they begin to reminisce on the goodness of God in that relationship, though that relationship is no longer there, the memories remain. And so they begin to thank God for the things and the times and the seasons that they had with them and then joy comes in the morning. Always remember that God will give you joy in the morning. Grief is not a home. It's a hotel stay. You may get me tonight. I may check in in depression. I may check in with mourning. I may check in with grief. I may check in with despair. But by the time I check out in the morning, I'm going to have peace, joy, hope, strength, life, happiness. These things are going to be a part of my life as well. I refuse to make a home in an environment that God has not created me for. Joy, peace, righteousness is in the Holy Ghost. That's where I'm going to live. I may <laughs> get off on the journey here and have a hotel stay at grief, have a hotel stay at sorrow, have a hotel stay at despair, have a hotel stay at discouragement and failure, but I'm living there. Joy, peace, righteousness, hope. That's where I'm living. Hotel stay maybe for a night. This is coming in the morning. I'm going to get back on track and I'm going to the environment and the habitation that God has willed for me to be in. So I just want to encourage you today, just here with my final words, shake yourself, wake yourself up out of the day. And if you're struggling, out of the night, if you're struggling, just get on your face before the Lord and say, Lord, wake me up. Cause me. David said, I had fainted. I had fainted if I would have failed to believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 
God's goodness is all around us. Sometimes we just have to shake ourselves awake to remind ourselves, no matter what we've lost, what is the goodness that the Lord has allowed to be left? Whether it be other family members, relatives, children, or memories, God has left me with something to remind myself of the goodness of the Lord. Joy is coming in, joy is coming in the morning. I promise you, child of God, weeping may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. And the morning is not necessarily a certain time of day. It's just when you wake up. So Lord, wake us up. Lord, help me shake myself out of this situation. Help me to open my eyes again. Let the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, let it shine in my heart once again. Wake me up, Lord. And remind me that no matter what I have lost, I still have your goodness left. May God bless you. May the Lord keep you. I pray this has helped you. God, let us wake up and know that the emotional despair of, 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 of the result of this cursed earth and this cursed situation that sin brought upon us, that's not my habitation. That's just a hotel stay. Joy is coming in the morning. And I pray that for somebody, you just woke up. Be thankful. Surround yourself in praise. And let God open your eyes to see the remaining goodness that is left in your life. God bless you. Have a great day. Morning failure does not dictate the success of the evening. Change your trajectory. Change your mindset. Let's, let's mature emotionally. Let's grow emotionally. You failed on the first quarter. That's all right. You got four of them to work on. God bless you. Have a great day.